Hi, I'm Christy. Today I want to talk to you about finding specific organizations to help you find the best living situation for your loved one. As I mentioned in last week's video, um, we, I'm talking about how to find the best living situation for your loved one. And this is another one of those really complicated um, areas. And so this week I want to talk to you about how to find ways or organizations that will actually let you know what the options are available in your area. So far, I've found two organizations in our area that can help me find the best fit for AJ. The first one is an organization called DRC, or the Desert Regional Center. Um, I'll do a whole post on all the services that they offer next week. But for the sake of this video, they talk or they work with housing. And for most of, the, for most of what they do, it's group home situations. And so they're the ones that will help me be able to get AJ on the waiting list for a group home. Now, generally, it's about a 12 to 18 month wait for them. But I have been warned that the wait could be much shorter if an opening comes up sooner. So we need to be ready to jump on it and move him out as soon as we put his name on the list in case that happens. If we turn down an um, opportunity, we're put at the bottom of the list and I've been told it can be a really, really long wait. Now the other organization in our area is called the Southern Nevada Center for Independent Living. This organization works with um, places that actually give you true independent living situations. Most of them are in subsidized housing areas. So this is more like a two to five year waiting period. And I've been told that each location has its own waiting list. So you've got to apply to each location. Another difference is that these places have a specific application period that are open where they take new applications. So you have to apply during that period and your waiting period doesn't start until your application is submitted. Typically, these are apartment buildings in a complex where the apartment manager is more involved than a typical apartment manager is, but they are indeed individual apartments and each person does live independently on their own and they're responsible for taking care of themselves. Now, if your loved one does need other supports like cleaning or meals or transportation, the Center for Independent Living will help you um, with those applications and making those arrangements, but each one has to be applied for and arranged for independently. But it is nice to know though that these aren't options if AJ does gain more independence in the future. As I mentioned last week, we're thinking that for right now, the best option for AJ is to move him into a group home. We're currently thinking that having him move out in about a year or two would be the right time frame for him. Now it's not necessarily set in stone, but I am getting ready to meet with his caseworker from DRC and starting to ask my questions. You know, how do I get him on the waiting list? Um, where are the different homes located? How, what's the process look like? All these different things. So I'm looking forward to seeing him continue to gain his independence and to grow by giving him these new opportunities. He's looking forward to being on his own and living independently. So you're probably wondering, so how does this help me? Here's a few thoughts that I have. First of all, know that in all likelihood, you do have options. Your loved one doesn't have to live with you forever. Also know that there are organizations out there that will help su supply and provide the supports that your loved one will need if they can almost live on their own, but not quite independently. The key is going to be finding out what those organizations are called in your area and um, what their process is like. Now, I found out about these two through a transition meeting that I went to at AJ's school. So that would be one way to find out about it. You could also find things like um, just a high school um, special education facilitator if your loved one is still in school, or you might be able to call um, a high school in your area, or maybe a college disability office. You could also check places like your local Medicaid office or low-income housing. Um, your local welfare office. I've been told that our welfare office has social workers attached to it, so that would be one place that I would consider starting. Another option would be to talk to doctors in your area that accept Medicaid. They may know what the process is like, or therapy offices also probably that accept Medicaid. So my question for you this week is this. Have you checked out options in your area? What have you found? Do you have any suggestions? Is there a piece that I've missed here? I'd love to hear what, you've, what your experience has been. You can leave me a comment below or you can leave me a comment over my blog at www.havenofhopeforme.com. 
This originally posted in December of 2018. I'd also appreciate it if you would share this with anybody that you think would find it helpful. I'd love to help as many families as I can. And finally, if you want to sign up for my email list, you can do that over on the website. I, this will allow you to find out about all the pieces to this transition process, as well as any other new content as it comes out. I strive to only send things that I think you'll find helpful, informational, or useful. So I am really glad that we have a plan in place for AJ, and I'm really looking forward to seeing him rise to new challenges, because as always, life is good, and there is never a dull moment.